Hi everybody, it's Mark Myers, the Family Woodworker. Hey, what a great little jewelry box project we've got this week. All done with hand tools and it can be done by the beginning woodworker. So when I say hand tools, I mean hand tools. We're going to start off with something called a miter box and saw. Just a small hammer, a nail set, a sanding block, some clamps possibly, and then of course a tape measure and a pencil. And that's about all we're going to need. Let's talk about the miter box for a minute first. I've got an old-fashioned one here. This one is, uh, is an antique that I've had in the family for a while. But when you go into the hardware store or you go into a home center, you're going to ask for something called a miter box or a miter box and saw. And it'll be yellow plastic, uh, and it'll have some angles cut into it. And this is what you do to help set up a 90-degree cut on a piece of wood. So again, you don't even have to have power tools to do this project. Everything that we showed on the table is all you're going to need to make this beautiful little jewelry box. So the wood, let's start off with the wood. This is just a four foot length of half inch by three and a half inch poplar. Now if they happen to have something else like a maple or an oak, that'll be great too, except that the poplar is going to be a little easier to work with, a little easier to sand, a little easier to cut. And in this particular jewelry box, we're only going to make this an eight, eight inch box, not very big, but I designed it for my niece who's just starting to collect jewelry, so it's not a very big box for her. But once we set up our first eight inch cut on this miter saw, it'll give us a nice straight 90 degree cut. And we're going to need four of these. So once we make our first cut, we're also going to do a little trick here to help us make sure that every piece that we cut is exactly the same length. We're going to set up something called a stop block. So I'm going to take my 8 inch, my first piece of wood, I'm going to push it up against the saw blade, and then I've got another piece of scrap wood that I'm just going to tape down to my work area. Uh, now if you've got a bench that you don't mind drilling holes into, uh, you could take this little stop block uh, and screw it down uh, right into the work surface. And that's going to be a great uh, sturdy little uh, way to keep that stop block in place. Now, in fact, my miter saw is actually screwed down to the work surface too so that it doesn't move around too much. But once I have my stop block in place, the next cut that I make is going to be exactly the same as the first piece. So you don't have to measure and hope that you're you know, you're, you're exact, it's going to make the right cut. Now we're going to cut four of these guys, and when you stack them all up, they're all the same length. So now we're going to cut the sides. The way that I've got this laid out, I'm going to use that same, again, piece of lumber, that just that four-foot project piece of poplar. And I'll cut the piece that I need to match that height so that's all the same. Now, as it turns out, it's a pretty good cut. It's pretty close, but I might have to sand it all a little bit to get it all nice and flat. But we'll worry about that later. So we'll cut two of those. Then you just want to take a piece of sandpaper. This is 150 grit, and that allows me to get all those edges nice and tight, nice and clean. And in fact, I'm checking the width on my side pieces to the box to make sure that they uh, allow the long edges of the box to fit nice and tight together. And so you can sand it down, you can shape it a little bit, and get those pieces to fit nice and tight. And I'm not worried about the top yet. I'm going to sand the whole piece for the top, but we're going to have to cut that, and I'll show you that in a minute. So right now, I'm just gluing and using tiny little brad nails. These are um, one-inch brad nails. And with poplar, because it's a softer product, if you've got the benefit of a drill and a tiny little drill bit, um, you just want to pre-drill those a little bit, and then your nails actually go in pretty pretty clean and uh, you don't run much of a chance of splitting that wood. Now I also have a little hand drill 
because I kind of wanted to show for a beginning woodworker, you know, you don't have to have power tools to make a cool little project, a little jewelry box like this. So I have a tiny little craft hand drill, and I was uh, putting in my tiny little holes with that, uh, easing up the um, easing up the hole, easing up the wood, so that when I drove in the nails, I wouldn't split it. Very low tech. So now I'm just using the nail set to punch those nails down a little bit below the surface of the wood. You don't want any of those nails sticking out. So they're all set in there. Now I'm going to check the top of the box. Now, you obviously, when I put in those two sides, this is the 8-inch piece that isn't going to fit. So I... I'm going to need to accommodate the fact that it's an inch smaller. So where I cut everything else at 8 inches and I've got two half inch sides on the box, I really need a piece that's only 7 inches long for my top. Look at how fast my hands go. I love video editors. So it fits in there, but it's really, really snug. And I want to be able to uh, open this this top pretty easily and so does your daughter you don't want it to stick so this is where we're going to do some shaping now i sanded the whole top and bottom of this piece so it's nice and smooth uh, but i want it to fit inside the opening with a little bit of a gap so that it uh, you know can open cleanly and not get stuck the other thing i'm going to do and you'll see me pull out a sanding block here in a minute is i'm going to ease the inside edge of this drawer so the part that closes down uh, not on the hinged side but the piece that closes forward I don't want that leading edge on the bottom of that drawer top uh, or that hinge top to catch so I took the sanding block and I eased off that corner a little bit so it was kind of beveled at 45 degrees so that it wouldn't catch as it was shutting so now that I filled it in with uh, a little bit of wood putty just to fill the little cracks you're gonna let that dry and that's all I'm doing here is sanding off the the wood filler and I just use an Elmer's wood filler uh, that was the same color as the wood so all the holes are really filled it's nice and smooth and I'm just taking off the little excess now we've got to put in a stop for the top so if I hinge the one side of the jewelry box top there really wouldn't be anything to catch it moving forward down into the box. So I've, I've cut a little scrap from that same piece of wood and I'm setting it down a half an inch or the exact width of that wood. And I use the, another piece of wood there to measure a half inch down and I'm just going to mark it with a pencil so that when I go to glue, uh, go to glue it up, it's in the right spot. So again, I've got that sitting a half inch down and we'll clamp that up with glue and that's enough to catch the top as it closes. Now for a little art project. These are little wooden decorative pieces that you can get at a home center. Um, they typically sell these by the railing section or by the uh, uh, the the oak and the poplar and the maple uh, trim pieces these are pre-manufactured and they're just for decorating like a fireplace or something like that but they're actually beautiful little flower rosettes and they're wood so I picked a color uh, that my niece would like she's a, a big pink fan um, she also likes purple but I thought the pink looked great and I just used a colored marker to color in that pink color now it's it's water-based so I, I I have to be careful what I use to finish it. I don't want the pink to run, um, but with a regular spray urethane, it's going to be fine. I'm also going to put in a little ridge on the underside of the top so that I can put in some cup hooks. And the cup hooks will uh, be there to hang little chains or other pieces of jewelry. So that was just another piece of wood off that same piece that I cut short. In other words, it's not the full width of the cover. And as you close the cover down, it'll take those chains and drop them into the box. So 
Uh, I've got five little cup hooks. I measured them out so that they're equally spaced and putting them on the underside of the top. The last thing that I bought, and again, all of these materials, the wood, the nails, the little brass pieces cost me 20 bucks. So these are decorative little hinges. They've got a little style to them. They, they sell solid brass, just rectangular hinges, but these, these are more of a craft-oriented hinge. They're pretty, and they're easy to install. One of the other things I'm going to do, just because they only use these little nails to uh, attach these hinges, is that I set the nails in a little bit of epoxy so the nails are never going to come out of here. I also measured the, in, the hinges just an inch over from both sides of the box so that they're equally spaced. And then I'll attach the other side of the hinges to the top of the box. So the hinges are now attached. I needed something to be able to open the box and I didn't like, I couldn't find any knobs that were really, really small. So I just used some satin ribbon and you saw the green satin ribbon there that I just epoxied to the bottom of the box. And then the remaining epoxy I used for the rosette on the top and I just centered that. So the top of the box has got that green satin ribbon. And then I'll need to put a little weight on the rosette and I, I had a metal weight to hold it all down, and there it is. So I still have some painter's tape protecting my green ribbon because I'm going to spray it on the top. And because I use that water-based marker for coloring in the rosette, I can't use a water-based uh, like urethane, like a wiping urethane. So I needed to use something that was oil-based, and a spray can works really well. The color doesn't run. It gives me a nice shiny finish to it. And I'm going to need a few coats on here, but I'm just going to show you the one coat. This project was really easy. Uh, an entry-level woodworker can do this in an afternoon. It's a lot of fun. And if you've got a young daughter who's just starting to collect jewelry, uh, what a great little gift, uh, even for Christmas or a birthday or whenever. You'll be a great aunt or a great uncle if you can deliver one of these things to your nieces or nephews or great mom or great dad. I encourage everybody to give this a try if you're, uh, again, an entry-level woodworker. And there's the cup hooks on the inside. Here's the finished piece. It was a really fun project. It didn't take a lot of time, around 20 bucks in materials, all with hand tools, nothing special. And I really enjoyed you uh, joining me for the video.